During Katie's journey to recovering, she spent a lot of time in hospitals processing what had happened to her and dealing with a lot of resentment and frustration as well. During our chat at last summer's Happy Place Festival, Katie had some amazing advice about resentment and also resilience. Have a watch, here's some highlights. Please, can we welcome to the stage a warm, beautiful welcome for Katie Piper. <laughs> Hello. Have a sit, Katie. When any of us are faced with challenges in life, adversity, the unexpected, we all, of course, have a decision. It might all, not always feel like it, but we have a decision whether to um, hide from life because it feels too much or to show up and try again and not let life beat us. Mm -hmm. And you are someone that has done that again and again, but you've done it right from the start. And I'm intrigued to know if that was a conscious decision or if you just felt there was no other option for you. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting debate because sometimes we are making decisions and we don't realise it. Um, particularly, I think, when it's a medical journey, if you have some kind of disease or disability, at many points, it feels like decision-making isn't in your hand. You know, your own body and your health isn't in your own control. And then you can search for things to be in control of. And, you know, I or when I was in a bad place, I would think nothing is in my control. I can't make any decisions. All I can do is exist and be passive. And just particularly when you're in the hands of doctors, mm. because, you, you know, I always laugh at the consent form because you think, well, what, what consent? You know, I, I have to do this or I die. Um, but then when you look back, when you get in a better place, when that power of hindsight, you realise you did make lots of decisions and you were in control of lots of things. And for me, my life-changing trauma was nearly 11 years ago now. And I couldn't talk or feel like this in the first seven or eight years. But at present day, I can say one thing was taken out of my hands in a few seconds and one decision was made for me. But everything afterwards... I was in the driving seat. Mm. And it's, it takes a lot of, it takes a multiple of things to help you to get to that point. But that's how I can sort of feel present day now. And, and it is incredibly difficult because the biggest part of a, any kind of recovery, particularly a medical one, is the anger that you had something and you thought you were in control of something and now you're not. But you, you begin to realise we're never in control of anything. Yeah. Anything could, ha anything could happen right now. And so we, we fool ourselves with that sense of security that we are. And then we become insecure and anxious when we think we're not. But we never were. Mm. And you've mentioned an important word a couple of times mm. uh, this afternoon. And that is resilience. Yeah. And often we forget about resilience. Because to be resilient, like you're saying, you have to face up to things. Mm -hmm. You have to stand up to your fears. You have to get into the nitty gritty. And you're doing that all the time with the work that you're doing, the writing, the talks that you do. You're not shying away from things. You are showing up. And as you say, it's, it's rebooting your resilience every time. Yeah. And I think sometimes we all get a bit scared to put ourselves in vulnerable positions because we don't want to be rejected. Mm -hmm. We don't want to feel hurt. We don't want to hear something negative about ourselves in case it impacts us. But I like that your thinking is, Bring that on, yeah. and I will get stronger. Disaster over here. Yeah, yeah. see, I don't. <laughs> you know, I've never thought of that. I've always just thought, avoid a problem, avoid yeah. people being upset with me, try and make everybody happy. But actually, I love that this is actually like cogs are churning in my old brain here right now, <laughs> going, no, those moments are gonna, of course create resilience and that is the most important thing for confidence and the whole fear thing as well I mean I was fearful for such a long time of so many visible and invisible things and I used to take it back to the prison sentence of years that the people who did this to me got and I used to think they're six years in I, they've only got two more years and I'm still too scared to do this this and this I'm the prisoner and I used to always try and think about it in a logic way of like, mm. who's in prison? Because I'm building a massive prison outside here yeah. and they're not. Mm. 
And I used to think, there's like one more year to go now, so am I going to still be too scared to go on a dating website? Am I still going to be too scared to try and go up for a job against other people who I consider are better than me? You know, what is the point? You know, I might as well have not gone through a massive criminal justice system, legal trials. You know, anyone that's been through a rape trial will know it's humiliating, it's horrendous. And then I'd live in this whole thing of my own fear, you know, built by myself. And I've got to get out there. I've got to do these things because they're going to beat me otherwise, you know. Mm. And it, it really became like a... And that kind of sounds bad for anxiety of making it a race in your head. But I almost needed that urgency to say, you need to go out there and try 20 times and see if you get one breakthrough in those 20 times. Mm. And then you will break that fear, you know. Mm. And, and I did. And I, I hand on my heart, honestly, don't live in fear now. I really don't because so wonderful. I feel I don't feel disabled, I feel enabled, I feel capable, I feel ready. But I also feel realistic that, you know, just one bad thing doesn't happen to us and the rest is a you know, a bed of roses. I'll experience other problems, other difficulties, other health issues, but that's okay because I'll know how to navigate through that. I won't be inspirational, I won't be confident twenty four seven but I won't break. You're going to be resilient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how do you deal with life and being in a space like this or a social environment when you're not feeling at your best confidence-wise? I think that's difficult because actually, you know, we talk about being honest and transparent, but sometimes there's places in your life where you can't be. Yeah. And actually, you do have to be professional or you do have to be boundaried. Um, and actually, again, that's something that helps you build resilience. You know, we do have to go into situations where we're fearful and not show it. Mm. You know, I've had situations with some people where I don't want them to know they intimidate me or that I am frightened of certain things because that will only make the situation worse. And that's a good uh, characteristic to have. You know, we talk about being fake and a facade, but there's a certain element of life where we need to put on a show. Mm. But actually, that's all right, so long as we understand that. So are you kind of, because, you know, we hear thrown about quite a lot, the um, sort of fake it till you make it thing oh, with yeah. confidence. Do yeah. you, are you on board with that? You think a little bit of faking it does help you eventually get to the place where you start to go, actually, I'm not just, you know, talking the talk, I'm doing it. I'm actually, I'm feeling the feelings as well. Well, it, it does, because if you look at the opposite of talking yourself down, you know, yeah. like, I look horrific today, I'm shit, this is awful, this is going really bad, it will start to unravel. Yeah. So I always think that not good enough tape. I think about when I was young, I would walk into a club and be like, I shouldn't have worn this. I'm the I'm the shortest. Mm. I'm this here, and actually, then it does unravel, and then you don't talk to anyone, and then it it becomes everything you're building it up to be. So surely, vice versa, it works with you know saying I'm I'm worth being here. People are, you know, you, people have come here. They want to hear this, and actually, then you start to sort of believe it, and it's that empress clothing. If you would like to hear that interview in full, all you need to do is head over to the Happy Place podcast where you can listen to that whole lovely interview. There's so many nice ones to listen to. Whilst you're in isolation, why not listen to some brilliant doers, thinkers, some bright, bold minds, all having a nice cup of tea with me.